What is going on, my fellow nerds? It is Monday, December the 13th, and that means it is time for my News Radar. Just a few days ago, I did bring some leaked images to you of a very, very interesting new foldable smartphone coming up on the horizon very imminently. This was the Oppo Find N. This is a folding a Z Fold style smartphone from Oppo, which has one big defining characteristic, and that is that it is small. This thing is actually much shorter than the phones we've seen as of late, much shorter than the Z Fold 3, so it's got a more one-handable layout in uh, that phone mode. And then, of course, as a tablet, it actually appears to be closer to a square or actually even more widescreen uh, than on the Z Fold, which is a quite tall tablet. Well, now we have more leaked images to show you here. So the first set of leaked images I want you to look at here are by EV Leaks because he's the one that actually kicked us off. And right as I posted my video, of course, further leaks did come out. So now we can actually see the back of this device here. And as you can see, you've got a relatively large triple camera bump, but like Oppo is wont to do, it sort of gradually chamfers up into the bump. So it's not just a monolith, it kind of slopes in in a much more natural way. I'm assuming we're going to get standard ultra wide and telephoto in this uh, in this triple camera layout. You can see on the front here, you do have a single center mounted selfie camera as well. Uh, 50 megapixel can be read there a little bit on that camera bump. Get a nice close look of that here. I think this thing looks quite good. And quickly here, just to refresh your memory about the size of this thing, here are some size comparisons that Ice Universe posted. This is against the iPhone 13 Pro, Huawei's foldable device, and the Z Fold 3, respectively. So this thing is quite a bit more compact than some of these other competitors. Now, EV Leaks also posted sort of a tear sheet with some information on it, and another tech YouTuber, Ryan Tim Tech, did go ahead and translate those and then post them again good channel to follow if you're not doing so already. So obviously what we see here is this is the Oppo Find N, brand new folding flagship. Next image here, they're bragging about their hinge as strong as the spine, whatever that would mean. Some of these translations are a little bit difficult, but basically they're talking about how it has multi angles that so we're talking about Surface Duo stuff where it can it can sit at any angle. It doesn't, oh, just turn on my flashlight. It doesn't have to be, uh, you know, like the original fold that would kind of flop this is gonna be more like the newer folding devices. It can hold steady wherever they need to be, which is good to see. Definitely talking about this thing being one-handed. Good image here to demonstrate that. And I, again, I like this wider, shorter aspect ratio. Maybe this is because I'm a Surface Duo person, but this does appeal to me. 120 hertz display, 800 nits is quite good. 7.1 inches whenever you are uh, have this thing open. And of course, it is a variable refresh. It can go between 0 and 120 hertz. So this thing could save some power that way. Also, having a smaller screen is going to help to save some power. And then they're showing off basically a, a sort of flex mode type thing going on, which I think looks better here than it does on the Z Fold. Because on the Z Fold flex mode, you have two very narrow screens. This is more like Duo in the sense that you've got two relatively wide screens. If there's a folding OLED device, I think, that exists that more approximates Surface Duo than any other, it's going to be this. Look at what you're looking at there, and then look at this and tell me that that's not a bit closer, especially compared to the Z Fold and so forth. We also have some information here from another Twitter user. It was pulled off of a post on Weibo. Weibo, I don't know. I've only ever seen this word written, so I don't know how it's supposed to be said. I don't speak Chinese. But look at this image here and tell me what you don't see. I mean, look, we see USB-C, we see stereo speakers, we see a corner-mounted hole-punch selfie camera. But what I don't see is a crease up the middle. There is no visible crease there. And yes, on the Z Fold line, you can see a crease just sitting there. That's quite evident. That is quite visible. And that is exactly the angle where you would expect to be able to see that crease. You can see it here, but you can't see it there. So has Oppo solved the crease problem. Here's another image. This is light kind of hitting at an angle here. You would expect to see the crease there, and I don't see it. All in all, for me, it looks like the Oppo Find N is shaping up to be quite 
a solid option to compete against the Samsungs and Huaweis of the world in terms of folding OLED smartphones. We've talked already on this channel a bit about how Android apps have arrived on Windows 11. In fact, I've shown you this a couple of times on my Surface Pro 7. I've used the touch screen, I've played games on it. But a lot of games do require the Google Play services. And that's why this news story is very, very interesting. Let's jump to this article here on The Verge. Google is bringing Android games to Windows in 2022. Now notice they don't say uh, Windows 10 or Windows 11, they just say Windows. And notice how they say Google, not Microsoft, because what's happening here is different than Microsoft's offering. Google is planning to bring Android games to Windows PCs next year. So starting in 2022, I'm reading this quote here, players will be able to experience their favorite Google Play games on more devices, seamlessly switching between a phone, tablet, and Chromebook soon. This Google-built product brings the best of Google Play games to more laptops and desktops, and we are thrilled to expand our platform to players for players to enjoy their favorite Android games even more. So this is something that Google themselves are making. And no, this is not something that's going to be streamed. These games are going to be running natively on Windows devices. And interestingly enough, this will support Windows 10 and up. It will not involve game streaming or any kind of special integration with Windows 11. The company will also distribute the app itself. So this won't be in the Microsoft Store. So you're not going to have two separate, you know, Google app things in the Microsoft Store from reading this. This is something you're going to download from Google, much like Chrome. Chrome is not in the Windows Store. You have to go get it from Google themselves. But honestly, this sounds really good. I mean, they're talking about sort of a quick resume type thing, right? With Google Play integration with cloud saves and so forth. You'll be playing a game on your phone. Put it away, go to your computer, open up that same game and pick up where you left off. How cool is that? Now, obviously, Microsoft has partnered with Amazon for their app store. The biggest problem there is that you don't have play services and play services are really important. Most games, a lot of the apps use Google Play services. So those apps like YouTube and things like that just aren't going to work with Microsoft's release until, of course, somebody hacks play services into it and then whatever, totally different situation at that point. But Google obviously has access to the play services. It's their play services. So really interesting that we, how we went from, you know, nothing like this happening to now Microsoft and Google both bringing Android apps to Windows at the same time. Let's talk about OnePlus a little bit more. So I made a video a while back about how basically the Pixel 6 was now what OnePlus used to be. It was a cheap, budget-minded flagship killer. OnePlus has now turned into a, a company that's making very expensive devices and I don't, don't really understand why anybody would buy them in the first place because they don't really offer anything interesting anymore. They're very good, but for the price, they should be great and they just lost what made them special as far as I'm concerned. Well, now, one of the things that made them special was that their operating system, uh, their actual flavor of Android, Oxygen OS, was clean and it was fast and it had just enough added features to be great without doing the Samsung thing, like throwing a million and one features at you that you're never going to use. Now OnePlus is actually leaving Oxygen OS behind as they merge with Color OS. If you don't know, OnePlus has owned they're part of a giant conglomerate of other smartphone brands like Oppo. So now they're kind of unifying their marketing and their branding for their OS. So OnePlus was going to be transitioning to Color OS away from Oxygen OS. And apparently this update was pushed out. And it was so bad and so buggy that they actually had to pull their Android 12 Color OS update and stop distributing it. I'm going to leave this article here from 9 to 5 Google up on the screen for the moment as I talk. This is just another stumble in a long line of stumbles from a brand that I used to really, really love. It's actually horrible as far as I'm concerned to see what's going on with OnePlus. I feel like they've totally lost their way. They've totally lost what made them special and different. And as they try to just, you know, basically they're doing things to try and just be more profitable, I guess, in, in the, in the uh, eyes of their parent company. But by doing this, they're losing everything that made them look like a renegade and made them look special, and they're getting worse and worse by the minute. This is a marketing disaster. Why would anybody buy a OnePlus phone at this point? Now, I know that that might sound funny because I've just been talking about how great Oppo's phone looks, and I guess that is a little bit uh, double speak for me to talk bad about OnePlus, but not bad about Oppo, but whatever. It is what it is. Consider this information as relevant to the earlier story as well. So 
So I'm going to close today on a little bit of information that I would like from you guys. So the first bit of information I want is concerning Surface Duo 2. If you remember, months and months back, I crowdsourced from you guys a list of bugs you were experiencing, and I made a video about it for two reasons. One, so that Microsoft would see it, and two, so that potential consumers would see it as well. I want that to happen again for Surface Duo 2. So if you go to my community page, you will see this here. There's a poll that it looks like 89 of you have already voted on. I need you to vote on it first. And if you vote for this option, saying that you have at least one, is what I meant to say, but autocorrect always gets the better of me. If you have at least one significant bug, comment what it is in the, in the comments below that, and that will help me kind of come up with a list that I will then talk about later. So please go vote on that and then comment if that is something that is pertinent to you. That is going to help future purchasers as I put this information out there and I'll keep it updated but we're going to put this information out there so that people looking at Duo 2 know what they're getting themselves into. I've seen effectively almost no bugs as of late since I bought Duo 2 so I don't really have much I can say about this but I know that you guys have some experiences that I haven't had. Help me share them with people. The second thing I want you guys to take a look at is this poll here and it looks like you know we're kind of already trending in a particular direction. If you want to see a discord server or not, please vote on that poll as well on my community page so that I kind of know how I can best serve the community going forward. Guys, that's all the news I have for you today. Be sure to check back every Monday and Friday for the next News Radar. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.